Okay guys, so I just got to the shop this morning. Um, apparently, I deleted a video from yesterday. I made a video of doing uh, piston to cylinder wall clearance that I was going to attach basically right before uh, the video I made for uh, uh, doing your ring gaps. Um, but I apparently deleted it. So I'm gonna do that again real quick here. Um, do kind of see there okay so piston to cylinder wall is pretty simple let me grab some tools okay so same kind of deal uh, telescope engage and a mic that fits your bore um, and then, of course, you'll need your pistons. So, basically how this is done is you just measure your skirt, usually about a half inch up from the bottom of the skirt, around the largest diameter, obviously. Um, the reason you measure down there is because the piston actually has taper, and it uh, gets smaller towards the top here. Um, and uh, each manufacturer has like a different spot that you measure it at. So, uh, you want to check with their documentation, make sure that uh, you, you know, measure the right spot. So, um, basically measure there, and then uh, you measure your bore, and I do that with a telescoping gauge. Same, same kind of deal as measuring your main bearings and stuff. Um, and then you can measure direct. You have a direct comparison to, from your bore to your, your piston. So... I can measure that. And measure that. And I see that I have exactly two thousandth of clearance. Um, and basically, you just do that for each hole, each piston. Um, and uh, yeah, it's real simple. Uh, as far as the the uh, tolerance goes, um, it really depends on your pistons. These, like I said in an earlier video, are a low expansion piston, so they don't uh, they don't grow as much with heat as like a, a true racing piston they're they're a little bit different alloy it's a stronger alloy but it's it grows more so um, you have to have more piston to cylinder wall clearance uh, these recommended what did they recommend uh, so these guys recommended one thousandth to one and eight tenths basically so just under two thousandths um, I chose to go a little loose uh, just because I knew I'd be throwing some boost and heat at this motor and I'd rather have it rattle a little bit when it's cold than uh, you know basically grow too much and and uh, lock itself into the bore or, or score up the the cylinder walls or the piston skirts or anything like that so um, anyway pretty straightforward I'm gonna attach this video uh, right before the ring gap video um, and uh, we'll go forward from there. I gotta, I gotta be quick though, because I got a whole bunch of stuff to do today. I uh, actually got a new product to introduce today, so I'm um, gotta get that all ready. And uh, yeah, so we'll see you guys soon. Also, um, if you guys are enjoying following along, and if you have any questions, post below. Um, I'll do my best to answer everything to the best of my knowledge. Uh, but uh, if you are enjoying following along, please hit that subscribe button. I know I'm supposed to ask that. They say that you're supposed to do that if you want to, you know, grow your channel or whatever. So, uh, yeah, please subscribe. And, uh, you know, questions, comments, anything like that, I'm open to constructive criticism. I don't, you know, I'm not the end-all, be-all. I don't know it all, and I never will. So, um, I do have a lot of experience, though. So, um, you know, I'll do my best to answer questions and, uh, you know, 
if you guys have some different ideas on how to do things, let me know because I'm sure there's better ways. But uh, anyway, I'll see you guys. Okay, so moving on to setting your uh, piston ring end gaps. Um, this is a really important step because uh, as, as your cylinder heats up due to power, boost, um, you know, making horsepower, heat gets built up in the cylinder. And what it does is it makes those rings expand and that end gap closes up. And if it touches, it'll start binding out against the cylinder wall. So it's really important that you have enough gap there um, so that that doesn't happen. Uh, it'll gall the cylinder wall, it might break ring lands, uh, it can do all kinds of stuff if you don't have that set right. So, um, pretty important step, uh, not very hard to do. Uh, all, you need, all you need for it is a set of feeler gauges like this. So, something with you know, your different, uh, different thicknesses. And this is what you're gonna check your, your piston ring with, check the gap with. Um, and you need some sort of a piston ring grinder. I have this one. It's a, a little electric one. Uh, it's got this little vise and stuff on it. Looks really fancy, it's kind of expensive. It's a total piece of garbage. This thing has made me buy piston rings so many times because it always ends up over grinding them. Um, Basically this little vise is just not, it's got too much slop in it and it, uh, and as the piston ring gets pushed into the wheel, it'll kind of suck it in and it'll overgrind it basically. So you have to be super, super careful. Um, and uh, you know, the little hand ones, the cheap little hand ones that you do, they're a lot more sensitive. You can get a little, uh, you know, you're not gonna screw up a piston ring on those and, uh, and they're cheaper. Don't, don't buy this. This is, this is crap. There is a nicer one out on the market that I've seen, but it's like $800. Um, so, you know, unless you're professionally building engines all the time, there's no need for anything like that. There's not even a need for anything like this. Um, I bought this because it looked like it was going to work good, and it just really hasn't. So, um, but anyway, this is what I've got, so it's what I'm going to use. Uh, and uh, so I'll go through the steps here. So the other thing you need is your, your piston rings. So you've got a top ring, a second ring, and then you've got your oil rings, which consists of, it consists of two thin little band rings and this kind of corrugated ring that goes in between them. And these, these you typically don't have to mess with. All you have to do is check that that end gap has a large enough gap um, and typically you know they do from the factory I've never had to grind one um, so you want like a minimum of 15 thou typically uh, but as far as the top ring and second ring goes different just different manufacturers call for different amounts of gaps so you want to check with your piston manufacturer or ring manufacturer if you have different rings um, on what their end gap is for your bore and typically how they measure that is uh, They tell you like on these for instance, they want seven thousandths of an inch per inch of bore so um, On mine, it's an 83 millimeter bore. So you do the math uh, turn that into a, a standard unit um, and Then multiply that number. So it's like three inches something multiply that by seven thou so it would be 7 times 3.2 or whatever your bore ends up being. And what, what these end up coming out with uh, is uh, 23 thousandths end gap. So that's the number I want. These are supposed to be drop in, but I dropped them in and they are, uh, they're at about 15 or 16 thou, so a little bit tight for an uh, um, engine that's going to run a bit of boost. Obviously if it's an NA engine you can be tighter because you're not going to have as much cylinder heat and the rings aren't going to expand as much, but uh, basically um, these ones, they want about 7 thou per inch of bore. So that comes out to 23 thousandths gap is what I'm, what I'm looking for. So the way you do this is uh, basically, let me see if I can set this up a little better.
So basically, all you're going to do is put the ring in the bore. So you close that gap. If, if, the, if it overlaps and it won't drop into the bore, then you're going to need to grind a little bit on it before you can even get a measurement. Um, but you put that down in the bore and you want to make sure it's flat. So they say that you should measure them uh, with the rings put about an inch down from the top of the deck surface. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set my calipers at an inch. And I'm just going to use this little end here just to set the depth of the ring. So work it down a little bit here. Kind of got to work your way around it so it stays even. So there we go, I'm about an inch down. Now get your feeler gauges out and start uh, basically seeing which one will fit. So I already measured these so I know that they're at about 15 or 16 thou. So I'll pull out the the 15 and 16 thousandth uh, feeler gauge and I'll just check it so so yeah the 15 goes 16 goes about halfway into the gap so it's a little tight um, let's see if I can show you that a little better So I'm not sure if you can see that very well, but all I'm doing is checking that gap with the feeler gauge. So the 16 doesn't quite go in. So we're just under 16 thou, um, so that needs to be opened up quite a bit. I need to be at 23. So what I'm going to do is set up my little ring grinder and I'm just going to start uh, basically taking a little bit at a time until we get down to the, the gap that I want. So you're going to have to grind a little bit, stick it back in the bore, recheck it, uh, you know, take your time. If you over grind them, you got to buy new rings. So, you know, it's worth taking your time and rings aren't super cheap. So I think a set's usually about a hundred bucks. Uh, so it's not something you want to mess up a bunch of times. Let me move this over here. So, setting up my little ring grinder here. It should be really closely set up already because uh, most of the stuff uh, that I do is right around this bore size already. Um, so I don't know if you can see, but it has a little cam right there. And you can adjust that cam so that the end, your end gap is square to the grinding wheel. And you definitely want to make sure that end gap's square. Because if it's not square, then your gap isn't consistent. And uh, you can't, you're, you're going to have either compression issues or you might have an issue where it touches in one spot. Um, you know, you just want to make sure it's square. So what you can do is basically go off of uh, the, the square end of the ring as it comes from the factory and make sure you, you adjust that cam uh, so that it it's remains square. And it looks to be perfect on this, so I shouldn't have to adjust it. And that's just because most of the stuff I do is right around the same, same diameter of ring. So it's, it's already right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up and touch this wheel just a little bit. And then I'm going to set this dial indicator to zero. Now this is only for reference because you'll see as soon as I turn this thing on, that needle is going to bounce all over the place due to the vibration 
of the motor and everything. So it's 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 only a, a general reference. And uh, you know, make sure everything's tight. And that's basically all there is to it. So. <laughs> You can see how it tries to pull it in. It's not awesome. So, back into your cylinder bore and uh, recheck the gap. So that's basically all there is to it. Over and over and over until you get it right. So I've only taken about two thousand, we're at 18 now. We want to be at 23. So I'm up to 21 thou. So we just need two more thou off there. So, time to be really, really careful. So we're at 22 thou, I only need one thou more off of here. So I'm just gonna keep sneaking up on it. Again, take your time with this stuff and uh, don't screw it up or you're buying new rings. That's perfect. The 23 just barely goes. So that's what you're looking for. So that's the top ring for that cylinder. I'm going to go ahead and uh, mark the pistons so that I know which rings are, are uh, going with which, with which piston. Um, just in case there is any deviation, at least you know that's the cylinder you checked it in. Uh, the, the top and bottom ring on these pistons, they actually want the same gap. Uh, be careful because sometimes your manufacturers want different gaps for top and bom bottom. Um, in fact, that's pretty standard. This is the first time I've seen uh, pistons that, that want the same gap for a top and bottom ring. Um, but that's the process. You basically uh, just repeat that for the top ring, bottom ring, um, and then for each cylinder. And then, uh, you know, just using your feeler gauges and, and uh, that's basically all there is to it. And then, uh, yeah. So in my next video, I'll start some of the assembly process. Hopefully I'll have bearings by then. Uh, but you know trying to go over all these small details so um, anyway if you're if you're enjoying these videos please subscribe um, you know they, they take quite a bit of work this whole process is taking a lot longer than it normally would because I'm trying to film everything um, so uh, yeah anyway so I guess we'll uh, see you